name is Gary Goldman, and this is Don Bluth. Um, going back to when we were at Disney, uh, it didn't take long to discover that uh, the movies we were making at the time didn't match up to what we remembered in movies like Snow White, Pinocchio, Bambi, Cinderella, Lady and Tramp, Peter Pan. Those movies were so wonderful. And we were there in the 70s. Those movies were made in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. And we said, gee, we're not making movies that were even as good as 30 years ago. And uh, we started making a push to try and retrieve some of those production values that we loved in those movies and even maybe push to get stories that would be a little more um, dramatic. And uh, Don got promoted all the way to producer-director, and we still couldn't make it happen because their concentration was on how do we reduce the cost of these movies. And every time we would throw an idea at them about making the pictures better, they'd say, oh, no, 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 that's going to cost too much money. And we felt that if we didn't do something drastic, that the quality of animation would continue to diminish and, and it would be lost forever. So there was a moment where we just said, uh, you know, when, when they tried to control Don on every move he made at, when he was producing and directing a, a movie uh, he directed on Pete's Dragon, we were able to get a few of the production values back in that. And then we tried to do that on a small one. And they would, every, every question he asked about, can we do this? Because we were doing those things on a little film we were making in a garage. And we finally said, you know what? It isn't going to work here. It just isn't going to work here because they all think, what would Walt do? And then they would make a decision. It wouldn't have been what Walt did. Walt was a risk taker. So there was a moment where we got a call from some ex-Disney ex -Disney, business guys. And I don't know how they knew this, but they called and said, we hear you're not happy over there. If we could raise the money, would you actually leave and make a company and, and produce some movies and for, well, for us? We'll finance you. Hmm. And we talked and we said, how did this happen? In a heartbeat. <laughs> and we yeah. said, we're there. So to be able to go right into land before time and make it, we had to leave the United States and we went to Ireland. And that's when we started the Irish studio and stayed there for almost eight years. Uh, making several more movies. In fact, in total, I think we've made 12 yeah. movies, which means we managed to keep our head above water for 12 films, <laughs> which was pretty good. It wasn't a bad idea to leave Disney, and, and I think it did Disney good, too, because they, they, because of their enormity and the size of the corporation and all the money they have, they become so easily complacent and think, well, you know, we're the king of Bunker Hill. We don't have to worry about competition. And we glibly said, we'll go compete with you, you know. We didn't really think that we would, a, a tiny little squeak like us would do anything to the giant. But uh, we found out when we finally went to Fox and made uh, Anastasia and Titan AE, the man that was there, Bill Mechanic, he says, we had so many meetings about you guys, how to get you to sit down and be still. He says it was, the competition was enormous. We refer to them as production values, the uh, special effects that, that that create an environment that feels like it's alive. You those know. tools, those special effects, bring believability to the uh, screen and to the audience where they suddenly are totally immersed in what's called a suspension of disbelief. It's not just the performance of the characters, but the performance of everything on the screen, including the music and the sound effects. You know what attracted me to animation in the very first place was its sheer beauty. And if you begin to diminish, like you say, the little things that make it beautiful, after a while, what are you watching? And so th and then it becomes very without a soul. It's mechanical. It's mechanical. And so it's like, have you ever seen paint by numbers? It's getting to be like that for me. When I look at one of the pictures, I don't see an artistic um, spirit there, but I see something that's crafted. And therefore, as an audience, and I love theater, as an audience, I want to feel something with the characters. Uh, and I don't. You know, our tradition in animation is to approach it graphically. All animators have learned that you, you learn to draw. That's what you do. But the part that's been left out for a long, long time, Walt knew about it, but it kind of got lost, was, are you an actor? What do you do with your drawings? Uh, Freddie Moore, who was one of the old guys, you know, back in the Disney days, who was a really just intuitively an actor. And he knew how to put great expressions on the faces that mirrored his own. But I find that many animators today don't know what they feel inside. They don't know what the character is. 
They don't do the backstory on the character. And when they're drawing the character, they're following a model sheet. And they, it's good to follow the model sheet, but at the same time, that's just a body. So you have to know what the play is about and what the acting is about. If, have you ever seen my, you know, what my, my son once asked me, it was in 2000, he says, you know, your goal when you left Disney was to help cause a resurgence in animation and bring back, you know, the production values of the past. And uh, I, I think we did that. I think, I think we made a major uh, sacrifice to get in a situation where we could change the direction of animation, and I think we helped it. So I'd like to know that, that they won't be forgotten for, for doing that. Well, there's a bit of a survival in there because <clears throat> as an artist and the way artists think, you really cannot just sit in the middle of a stagnant pool and say, well, I'll just live here. <laughs> so part of what we did is says we, we're not going to sit in that stagnant artistic you know, muck and not do anything. So let's go out and create something new because every day, every man is free to do something with his own life. And you can take, uh, you can choose to change it, change the world you live in, or you can choose to sit in it and complain. When I was at Disney's, I saw so many people that would, at break time, gather around and just complain and complain. And I used to leave the room and think, this is not good energy. And I only was able to stand maybe about a year of that before I said, you know, I have to, if I'm going to have a life, I, I can't have it here. I can't have it here. It's too cynical. And so I believe that if you have a dream, you go out and you make the dream happen. But to sit and do nothing waiting for someone to bail you out is not good. That was our, our logo, yeah. make it happen.